Good evening, my name is Rosa Ridley. I am a qualified mental health professional and a master certified anger management facilitator for GCS facilitators and consultants. Um, I want to start off by telling you a little bit about myself. I am a disabled vet for the Navy of the United States and I am a disabled vet at that. I served approximately 11 years in the Navy. I have a bachelor's degree in criminal justice from ECPI. I have a master's degree in professional counseling, clinical mental health counseling and from South University and at the moment I'm working on my doctoral, my PhD at Walden University in specializing in forensic psychology. Um, I want to start that we're going to be talking about anger management and using the we concept. We're going to start off talking about the word of the day. The word of the day would be consciousness. Our phrase of today is knowing one weakness is a strength within itself. So basically I want you to think that if you are aware, self-aware of what your weakness is, you're more likely to be able to change them and to make your weakness, you can change it to your strength. So just being aware of that. Awareness, choice, and responsibility. I want you to keep those three words in your head the whole time I'm talking. Awareness, choice, and responsibility. What I want you to keep focused on also is that while I'm talking to you, I want you to think of me of trying to help you to expand your awareness of what you're experiencing at the moment, in the present, the here and now. What I mean by that is, instead of asking yourself why, ask yourself what or how, instead of saying like, why this person made me mad, why they don't like me, why can't I succeed, ask yourself, what can I do to get better? What can I do to be more proficient? How can I go about to be more effective? What methods can I use to become a better me? Um, I want to talk about the just thought approach using the holistic approach of the person. And in this approach, you're not just looking at just the some parts of it. You're looking at the whole picture, the whole totality of the circumstances. So look at it as this. I'm going to give you an analogy. When you look at the sums of the part, you're talking about like a body part. Like an arm, a leg, your head. Now you can have one arm, one leg, and you're still able to be who you are. But you can be a lot more effective in whatever you want to do if your whole body was there. So that's what I'm saying. I want you to look at it from the whole process, the whole picture, not just the content or the symptom of the problem. I want you to keep aware of being conscious of what you're doing at the moment. Say you're engaging with somebody in a conversation and they say something automatically, it heightens you. It gets you mad and upset. Think of the physiological aspects of it. What is your body doing at that moment? What are you experiencing? What is your eyes seeing in front of you? What is your hands doing? Are they clenching? Is your shoulders up tight? Are your mouth or grimacing because you're angry. If you can notice these triggers that your body doing, then you have a way of, like a, a check valve, a baby, like, hmm, I need to step back, think about it, process it, and then go forward versus acting right then with the anger from out of impulse behavior. I want you to understand the role of emotion. By understanding the role of emotion, you can understand of how to have better interpersonal relationships with other people instead of going falling back into the maladaptive behavior that you may grew up using or what you learned from your parents, those of your peers, you just more cognizant of your own emotions. By becoming aware you're able to make more informed and better choices and you're able to live a more meaningful existence. You're able to take responsibilities for your consequences. Instead of saying, well, this person made me mad. Well, that person said this, this, this. If that person wouldn't did that, I wouldn't respond like A, B, and C. What you're doing at that moment is giving them power, giving them ownership over you. When you're your own controller, your own, you, you, the way you perceive things is your reality. Your perception is your reality. So if you go about it and you look at things like, hmm, you know what, this person's making me mad. But I'm not going to go there. I'm going to step back, think about it, analyze it, and go about it at a different method. Because by going about it at a different method, the consequences will be different. The last thing I want to talk about are I statements versus you statements. 
instead of coming out, a lot of times when you're talking or engaging with people, we're quick to say, well, you said that blah, 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 and I, you need to go do this. You need to wash them dishes. You need to pick those clothes up. When you do that, you automatically set a person in defense of state. If you come out using I statements, it lowers the defense of the other person. It makes them think, okay, we're both in this. It's not just me. You're not just pointing the finger at me. We're both talking. So we're saying, I feel that you need to help me work on this. I feel we could be better if we're able to sit down and communicate. So I just want you to keep that in mind. Thank you.